equal opportunities when it comes to the smoke. Black women, we've been doing it for a while. I remember back in the 80s, okay, I know I just brought y'all up, but uh, <laughs> I'm gonna do something for the ladies. Um, back in the 80s, right? You, We had Al B. Shore, that's Christopher Williams, sit your $5 ass down before I make some change. Derek, you didn't have to get off, okay? <laughs> Oh, but we had this back in the 80s. What? Light skin, curly hair, ambiguous men. This this was our thing, was it not? And then here come the 90s. Oh, Wesley Snipes, old dog chocolate man. And it flipped. So now all what's black women want? I'll tell you. Bam. Okay. Sorry, Derek. But we want the, the Morris Chestnuts and the Idris Elba. So we've had a preference too. This Are we colorist for wanting dark-skinned men? I mean, I do think, you know, Drake is trying his hardest. But he ain't making no comeback right now. So what is going on, Derek? And what's going on, Amawale? What you got for me? What up, Big Corp? Hey, what's going on? I'm doing good. Can you hear me good? I can. All right, good. I'm on my phone. Um, now, well, let me preference this for you, Um, Wally, because you had an awesome live yesterday um, talking about Fresh and Fit and their whole fiasco. So I wanted your take, and I know you posted something today that I thought was interesting. So I'm really interested in your take on preference. And is preference innately maybe kind of racist when we prefer a different complexion, a different race, and when we verbalize it and say, I would prefer someone that's not black? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I always make the argument, um, if you're referring to the post that I put up today, mm -hmm. um, I say that it's more than a preference um, when it's rooted in self-hate, right? Because, you know, preference uh, just simply implies desirability. Um, and we can't help um, that the things that we desire are shaped, you know, by the culture that, that socializes us. Um, so if you exist within an anti-Black culture, right, where whiteness or lightness, you know, is seen as desirability and, and darkness, right, or Africanity, right, dark features or anything that kind of uh, differs from, from whiteness is not seen as desirable that definitely plays into um, our values. Um, in fact, if you just examine this thing historically, um, I believe in the 50s, there was a test done um, by, by Kenneth and Mammy Clark, as referred to as the Dow tests, um, where they mm -hmm. were just basically showing that um, this, uh, these desirability traits between darkness and lightness um, were internalized as young as you know, five years old in children, right? children who had never been uh, taught these lessons um, just basically imbibed it by existing in society that dark is something that is unpleasant and unwanted and lightness is something that we should all um, de desire um, or aspire um, to have, right? So, I mean, there's been lots of uh, documentation and conversation around this for a, a very long time. I mean, you go as far mm -hmm. back um, you can get to Du Bois talking about it in the 60s, but I mean, if you go back even further um, than that, there's conversations. There was a there was a book written in 1920 called the the Mulatto in the United States, and basically it was the practice of uh, you know lighter skinned people who often were you know of mixed race, so both black and probably had a white parent or white ancestry. And they're kind of like paper bag practice. The goal was to mm -hmm. either marry someone who was lighter than a paper bag or to marry a white purpose, a white person for the express purpose of lightening the race, right? So our preferences are not as benign as we like to think that they are. Um, they are shaped and influenced by external factors. And I think that to deny that um, is like spitting in our own face and saying that it's raining. So I think it's a, it's a lot more to your preference and just saying that I like lighter women or women who are closer to whiteness and that I do not like you know, darker skinned women. And I think if we ignore kind of like the social um, aspect and the influence that sociology plays on it, I think that we're ignoring it to our own detriment. Yeah, and I agree. And, and I actually remember, of course, like the, the paper doll test. And I've 
interesting enough, I have a daughter and I've done the, you know, white baby and the black baby. Um, but she always picked the black baby. And that's because I, you know, but I, because I know, you know, social conditioning, like I'm always like, we was watching, um, was it Black Girls, that documentary? We was watching that when she was two. So, you know, I really, really tried to ingrain in her to, you know, love yourself, love your color. You are a beautiful Black girl. Dolls are Black. Books that we read are about loving your skin tone. But, you know, but those are steps that I'm taking as a parent, as young as one, two years old to ingrain with her. Now she's six and now she, you know, she loves her hair. And if anybody talks about her blackness, she's, you know, a young Malcolm X. So I'm like, OK, that's my girl. So I understand. But then again, what if it's like because a lot of times we're attracted to want people like our mothers or like our dads. So what if you're attracted to light-skinned light skin dudes because they remind you of your father? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't necessarily see a problem in that, right? I think that the conversation can be nuanced because mm -hmm. I do think that that occurs as well and there's nothing wrong with that. I think it becomes an issue in how we express preference, right? If, if we're talking about what what uh, peaked the conversation that we're having right now? Well, it was, you know, on the podcast when I believe Myron was basically saying that he, he and Fresh, they don't really mess with black girls. They don't believe in night riding. Um, they don't prefer black girls at all. But if they had to deal with a black girl, they would prefer it that she be a, 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 a red bone. A red right, bone. So I think that that's what introduced kind of like this part of the conversation. So if you just listen to the the, the language and the way that he talks about um, you know, darker skin, it's clear that he doesn't view it as something that is um, attractive or desirable. And that it falls right in line um, with the views of the, you know, the dominant society that we exist within. So as a, you know, we're not the dominant culture here, right? So right. we are very much influenced and socialized by the dominant culture. This is what the du Bois referred to as double consciousness, um, where we as black people we see ourselves through the lens right of our oppressor so if white people see us as ugly then we see ourselves as ugly so yeah the way that he you know we can have a nuanced conversation but the way that it was articulated you know he basically oh, said he, say was, he, he yeah. finds dark, dark skin is ugly and for, for for a black person to say that means to me that you know you you are impacted by self-hate i understand thank you i'm like what i'm a wallet what you got derek and hey eugene good to see you um, first off, happy new year, Courtney, and uh, happy, happy belated year, birthday. Bobby. Happy yeah. belated birthday, YouTube wifey. <laughs> um, Where's my gift, husband? It's, YouTube it's, boo? It's, it's on it's it's on the way. It's coming, it's coming. It's it's coming <laughs> soon. But um <laughs> this is how bald men be treating you. See, now now I'm now I'm gonna get bald men. Shout out to the chat too. What's going on, everybody? Uh hopefully everybody had a good uh holiday weekend. Um First thing I want to say is fresh and fit, stay holding ales. It's like every couple months they doing something, or you know, I, 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 I don't, I don't. This is, this is. I mean, they just keep taking losses and mm -hmm. and just doing stuff that's that's not well thought out or planned. I, I don't, I don't know what the deal is, but, um. I think everybody has a right to a preference, okay? There's nothing wrong with preference. But when you specifically say, I don't like a person because they're black, or I don't like a person because they're Asian, that's where you, you fall into where you start having problems. You know, behavior is, is, is not a specific color. So to say that, you know, I don't date black women because they ratchet. That's not that's not an honest assessment because there, there's ratchet. And I've heard them try to clean it up before. There's ratchets in every race. But to just correlate that with black women, it's like, come on, that, that's being disingenuous. Just say, I don't like this type of behavior in a woman. It doesn't have to be specifically a black woman or whatever race you can enter then that's when it becomes racist because you're singling out a specific race of women. Um, again, you can critique, critique the behavior. Now, when I'm like, I, I'm not dealing with black women, 
because they fat or whatever the case may be. You know, this, I mean, heavy women are in every race. So to just single black women out, it's, it's just, you know, it's not a genuine, um, you know, or just say, hey, I, I don't like a lot of it. All right. And real quick. And I'm going I'm to because because I, I really want to go in on these dudes, but I'm not. But <laughs> a lot of this is Do you think? dudes like that wanting y'all type of girls and not being able to get them. So I'm sure because, you know, we we made it obvious on this channel, you know, black women are desirable. You know, you guys are for the most part, even men that are not that are not willing to admit it, you know, may be attracted to you guys to some degree. So them being black guys are perceived as black guys, which are not FBA or ADOS. That plays a part, too. And I'm just, I'm not trying to be funny about that. But a lot of times some people, you know that are black may not consider themselves the same, you know? Um, so a lot of that perception of the westernized, what they see on TV from other countries, people kind of believe it. Remember what I told y'all about dating girls that were black like me, but were from Jamaica or, or Haiti or Africa, their perception of black people. And this is another black person telling me this, you know what I mean? So, um, and I think it gets skewed kind of your, your vision when you're just in that pool in that setting. They are in Miami. They are talking to a certain demographic of women age wise. You know what I'm saying? So it's like the pool is not real. You know what I mean? You can't just an assumption on and, and people have a prerogative again to date who they want to date. Maybe the black women didn't like you because you were, you know, whatever the case may be, but it's just. You know, it's, it's just like them just saying because the, the white girl that he kind of got exposed for wasn't black and he looked like a clown mm -hmm. over that. And that was a white chick. So mm -hmm. it's, it's just I, I think it's, it, it's I think it's OK if it's a preference. I, I think it's racist. It's not OK if it's specifically due to a race. Why I don't date such and such type woman because they're black, or because they're white, because they have red hair. Like stuff like that is, you know, so. Yeah. Thank you, Derek. I appreciate that. Eugene and walked away. Godspeed. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm sorry. I'm charging. I would came oh. up, but my phone, my phone need to charge up right now. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. Speaking, of that, speaking of that, Courtney, because I struggle stream and sometimes my internet is janky. So sometimes it works better when I'm not on camera. So at oh, times well, if you're, I feel yeah. it. You're if fine. I feel it doing that, like it did last time, I'll just go to cam because sometimes when it's live, I don't know why I do that. But. Yeah. And, you know, if I know you, I don't. Obviously, I don't mind. I prefer to see your face. But, you know, you got to mm -hmm. do what you got to do. It's just the people that I don't know. You know, we can't have no someone popping up showing their goodies. <laughs> no, <I'm not> <laughs> even, I'm not oh, man. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> what you got, so, God, Will? They Canadian born. Good to see you. So what I was gonna say, so what I was gonna say is, um, as far as the night rider comment, so as far as the night rider comment thing, they basically they say that they basically saying they talking about they talking about white women who like black girls. So that's what they mean by that. That that's the ones that directed at, at black women, and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to defend them um, by by any means. I watch I ain't gonna lie, I watch them for entertainment purposes. I be bored, uh, but nonetheless, um, I agree that. Your preference in terms of what you like, my dark skin, light skin, things of that nature, is based on how you're raised, based on your interaction with society. You know, we say um, our environment shape us, right? I think last time I was on here, I talked about how, you know, growing up in the high school and stuff, I didn't get the attention from black women. Now, mind you, I just said I figure black women didn't like me. I never stopped liking black women. Now, it might be my preference changed. Yeah, my preference changed because I was going after uh, women in other communities who, um, in, my, in my head, thought I was more desirable. You know, they gave me that attention, right? Um, I think I also mentioned last time I was on here that I have a friend who no longer dates Black American women. They still date Black women, right? So I think sometimes the line can get skewed. Now, granted, when I saw the full context of, of what they were talking about, he, he did mention he went and married somebody from Sudan because he's from Sudan, Myra. Um, that's black. And I don't I don't know why. Is it because he's black or is it because of the culture, right? 
Um, I was I'm, I was curious, but he didn't go in, into that. But I do think at some point, I don't think it's racist. I think it's prejudice, right? I, you know, I'm one of those people. I try not to use that word too much, but I think it, I think it's more prejudice than, than racist. But um, I'm I'm really curious when people say I don't want to date someone that looked like me. What mm-hmm. what's the what's the what's the real reason, right? Because is it self hatred or is it is it some is it something else? Is it something I went through? But yeah, so. you never you yeah. never really found a way to deal with that trauma, right? Um, I'm like my wife's black, and I, to me, it wasn't even trauma. It was just like you know, I got you know, I improved, got better to join the military, you know. I, and I, I was I say it jokingly all the time. I was in Ratchet City, my first base. If you ever been to shoot police ever? Everybody called it Ratchet City, but I didn't treat every single black girl I encountered as a ratchet person, right? I was raised really better than that, but you know, I knew I knew that pool for that part of the, part of the country I'm in, that particular city. However, I'm not I'm not equating to all to all black women, you know, what I'm saying within that city. So I, yeah, it's like I said, it's a little nuanced, but I think I'm like I said, I'm curious for people who think like that, you know. Where's that thought process come from? Because, like I say, it's self hatred, or it's yeah. some trauma, is it, or to me, it's trauma. Maybe not self hatred, but more so trauma that they've never well, dealt with. Well, let me go into that. And Canadian, I'm gonna get you to. And Eugene, if you're there, I'm gonna want you to pop up and say something as well. What you have to say, but sure. you know, and I don't want people because I see Raphael draw. Sure. If someone can call you. Canadian, is that you? First and foremost, I want to tell you Happy New Year, my sisters, and to the panel. (laughs) Thank you. Hold on one second, Canadian. I'm going to put you on mute. Let me say something real quick, and then I'm going to get what you have to say. Thank you. Um, So I remember, again, y'all know I show my Christopher Williams and my I'll Be Sure. I was one of those. I, I did like I'll Be Sure. But there was a thing that black women were wanting these high yellow guys because they wanted their baby to have good hair. Now, I know I wasn't the only one that heard this terminology before as far as with black women. I I want my baby to have some good hair. So I want somebody light skin. Black women were saying this a lot. Hell, I think they probably still do. Um, You know, I know some black women, I believe there was even on an episode of Girlfriends where one of the ladies on there wanted to have a mixed baby and married a white man because she was dark skinned and she didn't want her child to be called tar baby. And so she was, she wanted to marry a white man to have a light skinned baby with good hair. These are things that black women do as well. So I'm not just getting all into fresh and fit for their ignorance of what they had to say. Again, I agree with the preference, but when your preference makes you downgrade and degrade other people because you don't want them, then that's disgusting to me, whether it's a woman doing it or whether it's a man doing it. Have your preference, but shut the hell up talking about black women because we are not all the same. And just because you had a bad experience with a black woman, that's on you. And quite frankly, I probably see why they had a bad bad experience with a black woman. Fresh is, it's come on, he's lame. Is is Courtney is is fresh cute to you? No. So again, what about what about hold on, hold on, hold on, mama, hold on, mama. What about Myron? No. Well, there you, oh, there you go. Like, I, I mean, you can't it. you can't make the women like you. Yeah. So you know who you know who fresh is. Fresh is. If she, I mean, <laughs> think of uh, you know Biggie. Mm-hmm. Obviously, not as talented, but I'm, what I'm saying is, majority of women would tell you they don't like Biggie, right? Biggie is not attractive. But when yeah. Biggie got the success, got that money, and to me, that's who Fresh Vermont, you know, is is to me. He's a you know, maybe from the purpose of Miami, he's Miami's Biggie, so to speak, right? And so it is, you know, is that's funny, to, you know. He said he used to, he said he used to be fat too. Yeah, say that, but say that with Kodak Black. Well, hold, like, hold on. Fresh is not no, I'm a Biggie fan. Okay? <laughs> He'll tell you he's black and ugly as ever. However, he stayed Gucci down to the socks. Like, he's cool. Biggie was a cool big man. So I can well, no. understand he can still get a little woman because, you know, he had charisma. They don't have well, any. Well, I was saying from a look standpoint, but I get what oh, you're saying. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Biggie, so, Biggie had more character. I get what you're saying. Yeah. So, Court, your, your point about um, black women. And, and preferences as well. I think that 
those preferences are equally um, rooted in self hate. But I think it's mm -hmm. it's a lot it's a lot more obvious when you hear um, black women say uh, why they want to get with a light skinned man. They don't they don't hide it. They'll say it's because I don't like my hair. I want I want my child to have good hair. I want my child to have lighter futures, features, right? So mm -hmm. when we start having these conversations and you, I think somebody asked the question, is it self-hate or is it trauma? Well, I feel like to, to live in an anti-Black world or exist in an anti-Black world as a Black person is a traumatic experience in and of itself, right? When all of your experiences that you see in your group and people who look like you are shown that you are devalued and you are not wanted, then you're going to want to try to escape uh, that particular burden. And most people who try to escape it, we try to escape it through our mating choices. So there's a reason why the black elite within our country, I saw somebody mention like AKAs in the paper bag test. Mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's a reason why the black elite um, um, engaged in assortative mating for many years, right? It's the same thing you see in Brazil, right? This idea of improving the race or lightening the race, right? We don't like to talk about that, but there's been a segment of our community right here in Black America that has engaged in that practice for a very long time, right? So we do have that history, and that history is rooted in both trauma, but also in self-hate. And then the other part of that um, that makes the conversation a bit more nuanced, right? If you read, uh, I wrote about this in an essay that I wrote called Black Women Going Their Own Way, um, but I referenced um, Asada Shakur. Um, she wrote in her autobiography, um, there was, when she was a young woman, there was a dark-skinned Black man who was attracted to her. And when he approached her, she was like, "Yeah, you too Black. And mm -hmm. when she was kind of like thinking back on that, she was remembering how embarrassed she was because she didn't want to date him because his skin was too dark. And that was really the relationship between Black men and Black women for much of the 20th century. Now, I think what happens, and this is just my assumption based upon observation, is that Black men got a sexual makeover in the 70s, right? There was a movie known as uh, Mandango, where they had a dark-skinned Black man who was the love interest of a white woman on the, on the big screen. It was basically, you know, light porn for that, for that period of time. But once Black men, specifically darker-skinned Black men, were viewed as sex objects by white women, then black women came around to seeing them as sex objects as well, right? So that says something about our psychology too. Um, so from there, that's where you started to see a shift going mm -hmm. into the 80s and then coming into the 90s, right? Light-skinned men were seen as less attractive and dark-skinned men were seen as more. And I think another thing that goes into that, I don't want to hog the mic, but the last point is that um, darker skin has always been seen as more masculine Right. So for black men who are darker skinned, they're viewed as more having more masculine traits. Right. Aggressive aggression, strength. Right. Uh, whatever, whatever the masculine traits are. So it's the same thing that in a, in a darker skinned woman, a woman, a lot of uh, men will say, well, you know, she's too masculine because she has dark skin as well. Whereas though a lighter skinned man is viewed as more feminine. So a lot of women won't want to deal with them. And a lighter skinned woman, woman is viewed as more feminine, but those all go into the societal kind of like views on dark skin versus light skin. Right. So we can't ignore that and just say it's just a preference because it's much more than that. Yeah. Thank you, Amalala. Canadian born and then Eugene and then Hakeem. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. It's the Pandora box to go up in an African family. And you the darkest child in the family. To have a community that believe in lightening their skin. I grew up watching my aunt, my mom friend, who buy all kind of ornament from Africa, bringing them to the US. One moment they're like my complexion in less than two weeks, they're lighter than you. And I was like, what happened to them? Couldn't understood it until I went back to Africa and lived there for like seven years. And not realize what Omawala was talking about was something that not only be broadcast and put out of the agenda within the U.S. was also done in Africa all across the continent. Whereby, if you're light skin, you're more accepted. If you're dark skin, you consider to be unwanted, unneeded. Boarding school, my nickname was Shadow. Mm. Because 
When you turn off the light, you only can see my eye and my teeth if I allow you to see it. That was the joke they have for kids like me in elementary school and high school. People like me get picked on in Africa for being too dark. Now, why everybody is black, but when you're too dark, it's a stigma. Let's say if you're darker than dark, you're like black blue because your skin looks like it's dark blue it's when the light reflects on you. Imagine how people feel about themselves because of that. You come back to the U.S., you have to go to the same scenario. You go to high school, go to college. You're not too much attracted to more people because you're too dark for them or you're not the right shade. If you don't build a stick skin and you take that negativity and turn into the positivity, it affects you psychologically. I had to ask myself this question growing up. Would let my dark skin hold me back? Because at one point, I was self-conscious about it. It make young kids start to hate themselves more because they're too dark. Yeah. Imagine you're a pure African. You're not mixed. You're, you're coming from the middle and you come here and they, and they throw that in your face time after time after time after time again. You're almost convinced to follow your family trend of buying the imported ornament or soap or cream that to lighten your skin. If you go to every African corner store, African market in New York City, they sell that product. They never run out of it. The, you know that that started here in the Western world. The first, the first millionaire in Black America, one of the first millionaires was Madam C.J. Walker. So if you understand the history of the Black beauty and skincare market, she used to market her products as she, she would say, you too can have fair, a fair complexion. It's literally on the marketing, right? So black people here in America were very much engaged uh, in skin bleaching at the beginning of the 20th century. In fact, it wasn't until about the, the late uh, 19-teens, like 1915, 1916, where the pro-black movement via the, the Garvey movement, where Garvey came and said that black is a badge of honor and black is beauty, right? And pro-black was in full swing. Then people stopped trying to bleach their skin, or at least the masses of us. Right. The elite were still engaged in paper bag testing and things like that. Right. I mean, just, just think about the, the history of the elite institutions that we have. If you think of something like uh, Howard University, well, that's an, the HBCUs. If you look at their charters, they were created for the children of the plantation owners. Right. So they're, they're mixed right. race they're children mixed who couldn't go to that's a fact. couldn't go to white mm -hmm. institutions. They created these institutions for them. So they had no interest in. Uh, uh, mixing back in with the rest of the race. Their goal was to continue the process of becoming lighter until they were made white, right? So we, we have to understand these things. So when a Canadian born talks about bleaching in Nigeria, that same phenomenon happened here in the United States. It's just what we had that Nigeria hasn't had is a pro-black movement. You know, we had a pro-black movement here in the 1920s and then in the 60s, it was full mm -hmm. swing where it was like, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. The, the rest of the diaspora and the African continent, they haven't had a pro-black.